Hi, today we're going to complete some of the basic properties of the complex trigonometric functions. Uh, let me remind you of the definitions. We've used power series definitions for e to the z, cosine z, and sine z. And we've used those power series definitions to prove Euler's formula, e to the i z equals cos z plus i sine z. Uh, that's going to figure in prominently to these proofs here. Uh, we've also already proven the basic derivative interchange properties for these trig functions. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is, is minus sine. Um, we're going to prove some basic familiar and po possibly some unfamiliar properties. Um, these are strict, ge uh, simple generalizations of the angle sum formulas. These are probably new to you because uh, they're inherently complex. Um, so first we're going to prove the familiar uh, features of cosine and sine. The cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function. Um, this is uh, very basic and I'm just going to going to sketch uh, what you do in, to, in order to prove this. Uh, if you want to calculate cosine of minus z, you have to plug minus z into this formula. And notice that all of the powers of z are even, so the negative signs just go away, right? It, it, this, become, this has a factor of minus 1 squared, and this one has a factor of minus 1 to the fourth, and this one has a factor of minus 1 to the sixth, and none of them matter because even powers of minus 1 are always going to yield positive 1. And so that means that sine, the cosine of minus z is the same as cosine of z. Um, if we plug in minus z to the formula for sine of z, um, then we always get odd powers of minus 1. And any, any odd power of minus 1 is minus 1. So we can take all of those odd powers of minus 1 and sweep them out and make just one minus sine. And that's why sine of minus z is minus sine of z. So um, those are the basic even and odd properties of sine and cosine. Uh, they are familiar from the real, from the real theory. Um, but notice that these apply for all z. Um, we have a bit of a surprise here. We can calculate the cosine function in terms of the exponential function, and we can calculate the sine function in terms of the exponential function. This is a little bit strange and a little bit surprising for those not familiar with it, because we think of these functions as very different from one another, right? Exponential growth is very different from this oscillatory behavior of the trig functions. Um, but here it is. Um, if we plug in uh, i z to the exponential function, then we can calculate the cosine of z and the sine of z. Um, this is this looks really deep, but it's actually really simple to prove. So if e to the i z is equal to cosine of z plus i sine of z, uh, then e to the minus i z is equal to cosine of minus z plus i sine of minus z, and so e to the minus i z is equal to cosine of z minus i sine of z. So in this line, I've simply taken Euler's identity and I've plugged in minus z for z. And in this line, I've used the even and odd properties of sine and cosine to figure out what sine of minus z and cosine of minus z are. Now let me subtract the middle line there, which was just a waypoint, um, and then we'll compare the two equations that we have remaining. So if we add these equations, well, actually, let's add these equations and divide by 2. Then we get 1 half e to the i z um, plus e to the minus i z on the right. I'm sorry, on the left. And then over here, if we add these and divide by 2, we'll get, when we add these, we get 2 cosine and divide by 2, we get cosine. When we add these, they cancel and we get nothing. And so that establishes this first equation. The second equation is equally easy. All we have to do, instead of adding these equations and dividing by 2, we have to subtract these equations and divide by 2i. So let me skip the dividing by 2i because it's confusing and simply show what happens when we subtract these two equations. When we subtract these two equations, the cosines cancel and we get um, 2i sine z. So this minus this is 2i sine z. And then, of course, just divide both sides by 2i and we get this identity. So um, very simple consequences of Euler's formula um, give us interesting formulas for cosine z and sine z in terms of the exponential function. So that's a little bit surprising. Um, finally, I just want to indicate that we do have um, the traditional angle sum formulas for sine and cosine. That might be a little bit of a surprise because we think about angle sum as a very geometric thing about right triangles. Um, but these angle sum formulas are equally true um, for the complex value, complex versions of these things. Um, how are we going to prove them? Well, there are actually a lot of, a lot of, well, not geometrically, right? Not using right triangles. Um, there are a lot of different strategies that we could use here, um, but I'm just going to sketch how you would do this. Um, so 
using what we know so far. So sine of w plus z is, if we apply part 3, it's 1 over 2i times e to the i w plus z minus e to the i w, e to the minus i w plus z, like so. And now this is e to the w plus e to the z, so e to the i w plus e to the i z, that's 1 over 2i times, let's unpack this, e to the i w plus i z, and this is minus e to the minus i w minus i z. And we have a product law for the exponential. And so uh, I'm not going to complete the proof here. I'm just going to indicate what you would have to do. So you just have to apply the product law for e to the z. Because here we have e to a sum, and here we have e to a sum. And so we can just um, expand those as products and simplify. And so um, I'm not going to go through the details. And uh, similarly for the cosine. So those are all of the basic properties of the exponential and trig functions that we're going to do here. Um, hopefully I've convinced you that the exponential function e to the z and the trig functions cos z and sine z as defined by these power series really are good analogs of the familiar real valued exponential and trig functions. And uh, as we go forward, I hope that you'll learn to use your intuition without skipping too many steps.